Hey everyone, it's Jill the Wandering Stamper. I hope you're having a great day. Today we're gonna have some fun. Fall is here. Well, officially September to me means fall is here. Uh, in Colorado, where we're traveling right now, it's starting to cool down a little bit. We're hoping to be able to get some fall colors before we leave in October and start heading south. But today we're gonna have a little bit of fun and create this really cool fold with a really cool brand new set. It's called Winter Owls. It's in the holiday mini catalog that came out September 6th. And I'm a bird lover. I've always been a bird lover. That's one of the things I love to do when we're out hiking and enjoying nature is checking out the bird population wherever we travel. This owl set just really caught my eye and I knew I had to have it. So that's what we're gonna work with today. And we're gonna coordinate it with this beautiful paper and I'm going to show you that paper. This fold, it's actually a very simple card to make but it's so beautiful and you can use it for any kind of background paper you have that has sort of a scene. It's great for the One Horse Open Sleigh uh, designer series paper and some of the other Christmas designer series papers in the mini catalog that have scenes in them. You can cut them up and use them in this card so I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to take a moment to flip the camera down and we'll get started. This designer series paper is so pretty. This is called the Winter Meadows, I believe. Yes, Winter Meadow designer series paper. It comes in six, six, well, 12 patterns, two sheets of each pattern. So you get six double-sided sheets of paper. Um, there's two sheets of each design. So look how pretty. So you've got woods. This would make a fabulous scene. There's some little deer embedded in here. You can cut this up and create really pretty cards with this. Here's a pretty background. Um, I love the little blueberries. This will coordinate great with the blueberry bushel paper. This wintry forest scene, and of course this greenery, so much fun. But then you flip it over and you've got some fabulous backgrounds. So you can have so much fun. They are great for winter cards, but you could use them for any time of the year. So if you have your winter paper left over, use the back throughout the year to finish up that pack of paper because you could use it for so many things. So we're going to be using this paper and specifically we're going to use this sheet and then I'm coordinating it with the Misty Moonlight paper. Look how pretty this goes together. We're going to be using some Neutrals Adhesive Back Sequence. As I mentioned, we're going to be using the Winter Owl stamp set. And then we're also going to be using these deckled circle dies. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad I got these because look how many dies you get. You've got, you've got a giant all the way down to little. They all stack together in layers, so you can do some really cool cards. We're going to play around with these for the next couple of months and see what else we can come up with. But this is a really great kind of core uh, die set to use. Even after retired, this is so handy. I rarely get rid of shape shape dies because even if they're not, not in the catalog any longer, you're going to use them again and again and again. No need to get rid of them. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how to make this card. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm just finally getting my voice back from catching my grandchildren's colds. So it's just a little bit of a lingering kind of kind of coffee thing going on. Whoops, turn my paper cutter around. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is get yourself an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. This is Misty Moonlight. We're going to make this card, uh, we're going to cut this card the long way. So you're going to score it at, you're going to cut it at four and a quarter by 11. So we're going to cut it in half on the long, on the short side four and a quarter by 11 so essentially you're making two cards out of this sheet of paper and then we're going to score it at five and a half and this fabulous cutting and scoring tool that Stampin' Up! has makes this so easy because you can always see what you're doing so I'm scoring it at five and a half and then I'm going to flip it sideways and I'm going to cut away two and an eighth. So you're basically cutting away, but I'm only going to cut it to our score line. So I'm going to put it on the two and an eighth mark. And I'm going to, actually I think I'm going to start down here because I want my paper to stay still. And because Stampin' Up! does such a good job at putting markers, 
there's a little mark right here that shows you where this the blade is so I put it close to that score line and then just drag it upwards like that then I'm gonna go ahead and put my card back on the track where we scored I'm actually gonna do it down here on the bottom Let me get in your camera view some stuff out of the way <clears throat> And I just put it down here because I can see it better. And then you're going to cut. And I just put that score line right back on the blade, on the uh, track. And I'm going to score down to that mark and lift this piece away. So we're left with a piece that looks like this. And then all we have to do is fold it forward. Very easy. So that's our first cut. That's our base, so we're gonna give that a little squeeze and set that aside. Now, if you have a little ridge from your score, your uh, cutting, just run your both bone folder over it like this, and it flattens it back out, and you won't see that anymore. So that's a nice little tip for you. And then the next thing we're going to do is cut our base piece. So I'm using Whisper White and grabbing that here. The base is going to be, it's basically the inside layer. It's going to be four and an eighth by five and three eighths. So I'm just going to cut this in half again because you can make a couple cards with the sheet of paper and I like to use my scraps as much as possible. I think we all do. So four and an eighth by five and three eighths. All right. And then that is going to layer right here, like that. So we're going to set that aside. And then the next thing we're going to do is get some designer series paper. So I'm going to grab the sheet and I'm going to cut two and three eighths. I'm going to cut it this way. So two and one, two, three eighths strip just like that and if you're making several cards at once super duper easy you could actually cut all your strips and stack two or three strips together and cut at the same time because you can cut a couple pieces of designer series paper at once if your um, blades are nice and sharp so two and three eighths by four and a half and what I've calculated as is this will do one card so you could actually go and cut remember we had we had enough uh, Misty Moonlight for two cards, so you can cut one strip and make that enough for two cards. So what did I say? Four and a half. There we go. And cut that. So these two pieces are enough for two cards. I'm going to set this scrap apart. So once I have those cut, then you're going to cut them. So this is going to be what's going to go up here with a little bit of space. So each one is then going to be cut into one and a half. This will cut three equal pieces, one and a half inches. So I've got one, two, three. So there's our three pieces. And we cut two layers so we have enough for two cards. So I just go like this and divide them up because see they all go together as a scene. And then I'm going to stack these up in order. Okay, so we're going to use this this for the top of the card. And now we want to cut our pieces that layer behind it. So you're going to get some designer series or your, some card stock, <clears throat> and it's going to be one and five eighths by two and a half. This is where my scraps come into play. So I go grab those scraps, and I'm going to cut that. One and five eighths by two and a half. So I'm going to do one and five eighths. And one and five eighths. Okay. And then I'm going to do two and a half. And you want, if you're making two cards, obviously you want six of these. One, two. I'm 
just going to worry about three for the moment because we're just going to make this card together. All right, so there's our three pieces. Set those scraps aside. And these three pieces are going to layer just like that. And I like to keep my scene kind of together. I don't think you would really notice, but it looks nice that way. Okay, so those three are cut. That is all of the layers for the card. The other thing you need to do, and I did this off camera to save a little bit of time. Remember those circle die? So I cut one in Whisper White, one of the smaller ones, and then I later laid it, layered it on the next size larger in Pecan Pie. And the reason I chose Pecan Pie is A, I'm almost out of Misty Moonlight, and B, I'm stamping my owls in the Pecan Pie, and it just, I wanted to pull that Pecan Pie color in a little bit. And then we'll also be working with the Misty Moonlight, which matches the paper. So we're pulling all of our colors together and making a cohesive card. So I've got that cut. And then I also stamped this image of the owl. I love this owl. I stamped, simply stamped him in pecan pie and used the dies to cut him out. And if you haven't seen the dies, they're really great. These are all of the images that come with the set. It's so pretty. And you can make it very delicate. You can make it very lifelike. Look at this little, this is a little guy I had extra. He's so cute. Um, there's a branch that I cut out in pecan pie, another cute die. But these dies are great. You get a tree, basically, that one of the owls can peek out of. I mean, how cute would this be if I can get it off of here? I haven't removed this yet. It's on there. But when you cut that tree out and layer your owl, look how cute that is. So you've got that, you've got a small circle for the moon. Um, you have branches, tree limbs, and then of course this is the die that beautifully cut out our image. You also, and I can't wait to play with these, you also have these. this piece, this will cut Without even stamping, this will cut a beautiful owl out. And then there's these additional wings that will create a 3D owl. So I can't wait to play with this. This is beautiful, just simply cut out in Whisper White or very vanilla cardstock, basic white. I call it Whisper White because that is what it used to be called back in the day. Uh, basic white and vanilla cardstock would be beautiful to cut this out. Uh, you don't really have to do anything else to it. It's so pretty. So we'll be definite, definitely be playing with this in the future. So that's your winter owls die that coordinate with the winter owl. So you're definitely going to want both. Okay, we're going to set this cutter aside and start working on this card. <clears throat> so the first thing I like to do is kind of get my layers put together first. And that is so if we have a boo-boo, it's not a big deal. Uh, we can flip our flip our paper over. So we're going to do our stamping and our assembly. So the first thing I like to do is grab my silicone craft sheet and do this, do these layers. Um, I like to use multi-purpose glue for this just because I like the wiggle room of being able to reposition it if I don't do such a great job at layering it the first time. Sometimes with those stamp and seals. Once you put it down on the paper, you're kind of committed to where it goes. And I, under pressure, never seem to get things right where they're supposed to be. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting my glue down. Just a little bit. You don't want it to ooze out. And there's a big plane going over right now, you can probably hear. We're still close to Fort Carson where our kids and grandkids are, so we get a lot of plane traffic from base. We are now at a KOA. We were at a state park. We moved over to a KOA for a few weeks. We don't typically stay in a KOA, but my goodness, can you not make so much noise? Uh, but there's not a lot of options close to base, so. We decided to go ahead and stay here 
and get some work done on the RV that we need to do before we start heading south. Also, there's a great little water park and pool here so the grandkids can come and have a lot of fun, which we're doing this afternoon when we pick up our grandson. So there we go, I've got those three on there. And then I'm going to go ahead and add warm wishes to the bottom of this. And I'm doing it before I add the layers because I know where it's gonna go. And if I have a mistake, I can flip my card over before I've you know, gone to the lengths of attaching these pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink this. Try not to put my head in your camera too much. And try to get this straight for you. Okay, warm wishes, perfect that out of the way. So that's all the stamping that's done on that piece. So I'm going to go ahead and I stamped it in the pecan pie so that I'm pulling in my colors like I wanted to. So now we're going to take these three pieces and layer them on here. So I'm going to just flip these over and add my glue on the back. This card is super easy. This would be a great Christmas card because you can do a whole bunch of these at once. It doesn't take very much time. It actually doesn't take very much paper. You can make 12 of these with one sheet of designer series paper and just a few sheet, you know, obviously six sheets of the uh, Misty Moonlight and then plus your scraps for the pieces behind or just cut some more of that up. So what I'm doing is the key to this, the key to success on this I've found, whoops, wait a minute. almost had a mess. I put my dimensionals on my bird to save you time and I almost made a mess with it. Okay, so what I like to do is the two outside pieces first. So as you can see, I, layer, I laid them in order. Make sure your trees are facing the right way. Mine are not. <laughs> wow. Okay gonna do this again. Make sure your trees are facing the right way. Good tip. All right, so that piece is on. We're gonna add a little bit more glue. This does not matter. So this is why using the liquid glue sometimes is a lifesaver because you have a little chance. If we would have used the stamp and seal on this, I would have never been able to get this off. We would have had to start over. Don't wanna do that. Don't wanna waste your time doing that. All right, let's put it the correct way this time. I am so not perfect. Okay, I don't think any of us really are. Nobody will ever know that happened. So you wanna get these <clears throat> as uniform as possible on each side, and then the middle, all you have to do is just center that piece in the middle. So I found if you start on the edges and then work your way into the middle, that's really the best way to do that um, because then you're going to be sure that they're all even. Now, with my boo boo, I managed to, the tissue here, get some liquid glue here. I'm going to wipe off most of it. And then, if you don't have one of these, get one of these little glue erasers. This is great for getting rid of your boo boos like that because it'll just erase right off. So that took my liquid glue right off the paper. You just get these little, little nubs and you just throw those away. So there we go, perfect. So that is done. So now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add my glue to the back of this. So we're just building our layer, really. See if I can pick it up without getting my fingers gunky. All right, so now you're gonna open up your card base and go ahead and pop this down. There's just a very narrow margin, so it's pretty easy to do. Get everything nice and neat, smush it around until it's perfect. Look how pretty. So that's done. You have plenty of room to write a message. You could even write over here if you wanted to as well. So now the next thing we wanna do is build this. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is get my saying. I love this one. It says, may, may you have time to enjoy the quiet moments of the season. And I just kind of picture a winter wood, woodsy setting with this beautiful owl flying through snow. How peaceful is that? That just to me screams peace and quiet. So I'm going to put this toward the top of the circle. Like, whoops, like that. And then stamping off my pad. The reason I do this is so I don't put so much ink on my cleaner. Okay. And now, <clears throat> close this up. And I'm going to use my adhesive again. And just put a little down. And just center that onto the pecan pie circle, like so. And I like this because it's, they're they're kind of they're deckled circles, so the edges are rough. So it just kind of makes it look a little bit look look a little bit like wood. I think what would be really cool too is to take this pecan pie piece and run it through a die that has a wood grain to it. I think that would be cool. It'd look like a tree trunk. So now that this is on here, this is going to go here, but I like to grab my, I like to grab my owl. I like to put my owl, so this wing kind of goes under the words. So what I like to do is I, I don't want it to hang off the bottom of the card because I want it to fit in an envelope. So I kind of place everything where I know it will fit. And then I move this out of the way and take my pencil and if you take your pencil and make a little line here, you know where you can't go for glue. So we know where to keep our glue now. Move him out of the way. So I look at the top, that's the top of the saying. So I know I want my glue down here. And I'm just gonna go ahead on this piece and use my Stampin' Seal Plus, it's nice and strong. And I'm just gonna put down a couple of strips, being careful not to go over that line. And then once I've got that on there, I just erase this little line. You usually don't see it anyways, but I like to erase it. These big pencils are fabulous because the lines erase so well on paper. I use these all the time. I have a link to my to these pencils on my craft room favorites. So if you want to know where to get them, go on there and you'll be able to find that. So then what I'll do is put this back on here. Ooh, I got a couple little tabs sticking out. I'm going to push those under. So I kind of reposition this. And now I know that where I put my owl is going to be just fine. So there we go. And then when you flip it over, no adhesive. So now I did this ahead of time. I put dimensionals. I actually used the scrap ends of my minis. Um, and cut these big pieces off the edges of my mini dimension or my mini dimensionals because I am out of big dimensionals. They come in the mail today, thank goodness. I had way more minis than I had big ones and it got away from me. So now that I have that on there, I'm just going to layer my owl where I want him, being careful that he's not going to go over the side. So there we go. And I colored him in Wink of Stella. So if you have never played with Wink of Stella, it, I have the clear wink of Stella and you just lightly go over the whole bird and he it kind of blends a little bit of the ink so the bird doesn't look so white so it's really pretty it's a soft shimmer um, I know you can't see it on camera but this this wink of Stella makes it look sort of like it's glistening in the snow so pretty so the last thing we're gonna do on this card is I have my neutrals adhesive backed sequence these actually match the card perfectly and I'm going to use these silver ones because it reminded me a little bit of snow and I'm going to put a couple of these down so I'm going to use a big one maybe down here and a couple of these little ones I'm going to have to do a project that uses the other colors I've been using these so much and put that there so that just adds a little bit of extra shimmer so there we go our card is done <clears throat> it only takes a few minutes. It's so pretty. Uh, you have tons of room to write your message here. You can even write over here. If you write a lot on your cards, just add a, 
piece of white cardstock to the back of this as well and you can write away and as you can see I have a teeny bit of liquid glue right here from my little mishap earlier I'll just take my eraser and that gets rid of it so you don't have any sticky and it looks nice and clean so get yourself one of those erasers if you don't have them they are a lifesaver so there's my card I can't wait to make some other cards you could have fun with this and use birthday cards use some bright happy colors I mean you can just do anything with this card but it works so well with scenic paper so go, go ahead and play around with it and let me know what you think about this card and don't forget when you make a card like this you want to decorate your envelope so sometimes I use background paper to cover this back flap but this time I decided to use uh, one of the other sayings and this little owl to make it look like the owl landed and now our envelope is perf perfectly coordinated with our card so whoever gets this card is going to absolutely love it so I hope you enjoyed this card if you want to see more of these videos that I publish every week go ahead and subscribe to my channel give me a like and if you need any of the supplies for this card or um, the instructions on how to make it I will have all of the cutting instructions and products listed on my website at wanderingstamper.com there'll be a link below um, and you can get all the information on how to make this card and where these products are found I hope you have a fabulous day today and I hope you get a chance to get crafty Thank you very much for your time.